So this is looking at one of the social psychological explanations of aggression, and that is the frustration aggression hypothesis. Now, this theory was put forward by Dollard, and it's based on the psychodynamic argument that it is cathartic. So Freud believed that aggression was innate and that behaving aggressively would be cathartic. It would cause that release of it. So it would make a person feel better because they'd got it off their chest. Now, the idea is that when we are frustrated, that leads to aggression and aggression causes a person to feel that release of that frustration. Now, the individual is prevented from achieving their goals. That will cause them to be frustrated and that always leads to aggression. So the important idea of this explanation is that frustration always leads to aggression and aggression is caused by frustration. Now, they can either have sub sublimation so they channel that aggression into um, acceptable activities such as sport or they could have displacement so they redirect aggression onto something or someone else. Now aggression can't always be, be a, um, directed at that source of aggression, that frustration, so it might be an abstract concept such as a, um, not being successful, um, not having money, um, or there is that risk of punishment. So it's the idea that it could be displaced on someone else. It could be um, attributed to a scapegoat. So you behave aggressively towards someone or something else that isn't that source of frustration. Now, research seems to suggest that unjustified frustration produces more um, aggression than justified um, frustration. So people said that they would be angrier if they were waiting at a bus stop and a bus drove past whilst they were waiting without any clear reason why. So if the bus was fully working and there were empty seats and it didn't stop, they would be more angrier because it was unjustified. Whereas if the bus didn't stop because it was full or it had an out of service sign, it, that would be justified in its reason. Therefore, it's less likely that they would be angry and have that aggression. So if we were to look at some evaluation then, we do have supporting evidence. So it can explain violent behaviour in football fans. So um, research into Swedish football teams and their change of position in league so that was how they measured the frustration and they measured aggression by the number of objects that were thrown by the fans during games so missiles and fireworks now the study showed that when the team performed worse than expected they threw more objects so i.e they were more likely to behave aggressively. So when they became more frustrated, so they performed worse and it was unjustified. So they were expected to play well, but they didn't. They became more aggressive. They were likely to throw more things and engage in fights with the, the opposing team. However, we have opposing and uh, contradictory um, evidence and theories. So not all aggression is caused by frustration. So it's found that when temperatures increase, the likelihood that pitchers in a baseball um, game would display aggressive behaviour towards batters also increased. So that indicates that aggression happened because of um, temperature rise rather than frustration. Equally, other factors such as pain and noxious stimulus has been found to increase aggressive behaviour. So this suggests that the hypothesis might be too simplistic and might not offer a, a complete explanation of aggression and aggression can be caused by other factors, not just frustration. Now it is useful. It can help to explain mass killings. So it suggests that mass killings are often caused by social and economic difficulties with a society and it leads to um, scapegoating and aggression. So 
if you think back to Germany at the end of um, World War One, they saw the Jews as being responsible for Germany losing World War One, and that subsequent plight of um, the economy and the recession. So they were scapegoat. So this demonstrates that widespread frustration can um, result in extreme and violent aggressive consequences, which supports the theory that, that frustration leads to aggression and it can be useful in, in explaining certain um, historical events. Now, the past paper question that has been, has been an outline and evaluate one social psychological theory of aggression. So you could talk about the frustration aggression in this explanation. So you're going to want to talk about this, the idea that um, a person becomes frustrated and aggression is that cathartic element. They get that frustration off their trust. It makes them feel better. They can go down two, two routes. They can either channel it in an acceptable way into sporting events or they can have displacement of that behaviour and channel it onto someone else or something else. Now, you can link that to the idea that there's going to be scapegoating. So you, when you can't behave aggressively either to the thing that has caused you frustration because it's an abstract concept or you run the risk of punishment from behaving aggressively towards that object. Now, in terms of AO3, I would aim for three evaluation points. So point, evidence, explain, link. But if you are struggling with that, remember, it's perfectly acceptable to do point, evidence, and explain. It's better to do them well than to try and do a link sentence and not do it very well. Now, if you can try to get in your counter arguments to what might be some of the issues surrounding the methodology of the supporting um, research and does that, that weaken um, the assumptions and the findings. Um, and equally, are there any issues and debates surrounding it? So can we try and show the examiner we have great understanding of psychology and we can be synoptic and make links between different topics. 